Hey there, Angular fans. So signals are a fairly new concept in Angular, but I'm sure many of you out there are using them often. And if you're anything like me, when using writable signals, you probably found yourself wondering when to use the set versus the update method when setting their values. Well, in this tutorial, we're diving into this question to help you understand why you may want to use one over the other. We'll start with the case for the update method first. Okay, here we're using the PetPix application that I use for many of my Angular tutorials. In this application, we have a form where users can purchase prints of the photos that others have shared. And in this form, the user can adjust the quantity of prints that they wanna purchase. Now, at the moment, we can see that clicking these buttons does nothing. This is because they aren't yet wired up. And this is what we're going to do in this tutorial. Okay, let's look at the code for this purchase form component. Here, we have the quantity input and the buttons to add or remove items. We can also see that we already have a quantity property that we use the ng model directive to update when the value entered changes. So if I change the quantity to two here, we'll see that our total and shipping and handling values change too. Well, this is all happening because this quantity property is already a signal, which we'll see in a minute. But for now, just understand that it's a signal and the total and shipping and handling values are also signals that are computed using this quantity signal. The other thing that I wanna point out here is that the remove button is currently calling a remove method when clicked. Likewise, the add button calls an add method. These two methods are what we'll be wiring up. Okay, let's switch to the TypeScript. First off, here we have our quantity signal. This signal is created using the new linked signal function, which is both a writable signal and a signal that updates when another signal changes too. And if you're unfamiliar with this concept, I've created a couple of tutorials that you should definitely check out as well. So this property is a writable signal that no matter what its value is, will reset to one whenever the image ID signal changes. Up here, we can also see that the total and shipping properties are created as computed signals that use this quantity property to determine their values, which is why we saw them update as we adjusted the quantity directly. So everything we've seen so far is working just fine. We just need to wire up the add and remove functions for our buttons. And since we're working with a writable signal, we can choose either the set or the update methods to set the value of our signal. But this scenario is probably a little better suited for the update method since we will always need to calculate the new value based on the previous value. So let's start with the add function. When it's called, we want to add one to the current quantity. So let's use the update method. Now we need to add a callback function with the previous value as an argument. And this allows us to use the previous value and simply add one to it. That's it. Now let's add the logic to the remove function. We'll still wanna use the update method here because we're just going to use subtraction instead of addition, of course. But this time we need to avoid calculating if the value is already one. We don't want folks to be able to end up with a quantity of zero or a negative quantity. So we'll check that our previous value is greater than one. Then we'll use a ternary operator and return the previous value minus one. Or if it's already one, 
will simply return one. Okay, now to be fair, as far as I understand, the use of the update method versus set is really just a matter of convenience. In this case, we could actually use the set method to do the same calculation. We'd just use our signal in the calculation. So this would work exactly the same. But in a case where we're relying on the previous value, it probably makes more sense to use update instead. And that's what I use as a rule of thumb as to when to use one or the other. So if we save now, let's see how these buttons work. Nice, it looks like they work properly when adding and removing items. So that's something I'd probably use the update method for. Now let's look at where we may want to use set instead. Up here in the header, we have a hamburger menu button. When we click it right now, nothing happens. Let's look at the code to see why. Okay, here in the header, we have an if condition wrapping our nav component. So we only show this when a show menu signal is true. Let's look at the TypeScript to see how this is being set right now. Okay, this looks like the problem, huh? All we have is the signal declaration with an initial value of false. So we need to set it to true when we click the button. Let's switch back to the template. Now, in this case, we don't care what the previous value was. When we click the button, we want the show menu signal to be set to true. So let's add a click event to our button here. When this event fires, we can simply set the signal to true with the set method. That's what we want every time, regardless of the previous value. Now on the navigation component, we have a close event that fires when we click anywhere outside of the menu while it's open. When this event fires, we want the opposite. We want to set the signal to false no matter what the previous value was. Okay, let's save and try this out. Nice, now the menu opens and closes just like we want. So it's pretty subtle, but if you're factoring in the old value to update your signal, you'll probably want to use the update method. But you certainly don't have to. You can just use the set method all the time if you want to. I don't think anyone will get mad at you. All right, hopefully that was helpful. I've definitely been confused on this in the past. Be sure to check out the channel for lots more Angular tips and tricks.